You're listening to one of the greatest serial killers in the history of mankind, the female Anopheles mosquito. This tiny insect carries the plasmodium, the terrible parasite responsible for malaria. Malaria is a disease of fever, trembling, joint pain, vomiting, anemia, and convulsions that is a global scourge. For Steve Ward at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, ground zero in the fight against malaria is in Central Africa, where 90% of the world's deaths occur. On average, two people every minute die from the disease. There are, there are clearly lots of, lots of infections which uh, blight the, uh, the African uh, countries of the world. Uh, but by far the most important of the parasitic infections is the malarial parasite. Combating one of the most deadly parasites known to man requires the combined efforts of a large consortium of European scientists working closely with colleagues in the African continent. Steve Ward heads up this large team. Their project is called Antimal, involving 29 European and 10 African research institutions. The aim is simple, to develop new, efficient and cheap antimalarial drugs to stop the parasite in its tracks. One of the core cornerstones of the Antimal initiative is to develop novel antimalarials which are safe and effective, but most, most importantly, they have to be affordable. The affordability of malaria drugs is imperative for African countries because the disease typically goes hand in hand with poverty. But experience shows that producing such drugs is easier said than done. For many years, the battle was fought with the drug chloroquine, but now that drug's failing. We're now in a situation uh, uh, in this particular century where there's almost nowhere in the world where chloroquine is effective. So although it's still used, it's actually ineffective in killing parasites in most of the places it's used. So scientists developed a replacement drug called Fancidar. Unfortunately, since that was introduced maybe 20 years ago, parasites have become increasingly resistant to that. Today, in the 21st century, no effective vaccine for malaria exists. The only real weapon to protect against the disease is the mosquito net. This is helpful, but not enough. And the parasite continues to be transmitted from person to person. New drugs are needed to combat the enemy. This is the enemy the scientists are fighting, the plasmodium, the malaria parasite magnified under the microscope. It's incredibly small, but its effects are devastating. The parasites enter the bloodstream when humans are bitten by an infected female Anopheles mosquito. Once inside the human body, the parasites travel to the liver where they mature. About a week later, they re-enter the bloodstream, invading the red blood cells. There, they reproduce until the red blood cells burst, releasing thousands more parasites into the body. And that's when the disease takes hold. When the parasites break out of the red cells, you get the normal feelings of you get cold and fever and aches. Left untreated, malaria can cause kidney and liver failure coma and seizures, leading to death within days. With half the world's population at risk from malaria and a staggering 250 million infections a year, the big issue is frighteningly clear, how to combat the disease if conventional drugs don't work. Here at St. George's University in London, Sanjeev Krishna and his student Sanija Slavich have begun by discovering something intriguing. Like us, the parasite needs to feed. It does it by stealing glucose from our red blood cells, but in a rather unconventional way. The malaria parasite doesn't have a mouth like we do, and, um, uh, but we discovered a transporter. This glucose transporter represents an important chink in the parasite's armour. It's a real Achilles heel in the parasite because if you can uh, inhibit the glucose transporter, then you stop uh, glucose entering into the parasite and the parasite curls up and dies. But perhaps the biggest breakthrough in the war against the parasites 
comes from Dr. Henri Vial and the team in France. What we wanted to do is to elucidate a very specific point concerning the biology of this parasite. I mean, how this parasite was making its membrane, which are basically the wall of its house. The group have made an important discovery, that the parasite itself has to build its membrane from fatty compounds called phospholipids. And this is where it's vulnerable. It's hoped this significant finding will lead to the downfall of the enemy. We developed some innovative tools to block the capacity of the parasite to make its membrane. And the idea is that a parasite cannot survive, cannot develop inside our human body without being able to make its house. It's led scientists to develop a new molecular medicine to attack the parasite. So, pharmaceutical industry is currently developing this new medicine against severe malaria in three countries of Africa where malaria is endemic. And we expect the testing of this molecule to be finished within four years. Until medical trials of the work from Montpellier, St. George's University and other institutions within Antimal are complete, more conventional drugs remain the only way to fight malaria, and Antimal has searched far and wide for the Holy Grail. The way that we've managed to uh, hold back the problem of the disease is by uh, turning to a, a relatively old treatment, which is based on a herbal remedy from China, based on the plant Artemisia annua, which has a, a, an anti-malarial component in it called artemisinin. Uh, so the Chinese have known about this for thousands of years, uh, and the West has, has only caught on to it relatively recently. Artemisinin is the primary treatment against malaria today. But worryingly, like previous drugs, its days of being effective also appear numbered. Recently, over the last three or four years, reports have started to uh, occur from Southeast Asia, around the Thai-Cambodian border, and now around the Thai-Myanmar border, which clearly indicates that parasites in those regions are becoming less sensitive to these particular molecules. If that does occur, then we really are in quite a difficult set of circumstances. There aren't any real alternatives that we could immediately turn to. It's an all too familiar story. Scientists develop drug, disease evolves to become resistant to drug. In many ways, malaria is similar to AIDS because malaria parasites mutate so quickly um, and therefore we need to constantly work to, on developing a novel drugs to, to, to fight this disease. This increases the urgency for the anti-mal scientists to step up their efforts in the battle for a cure. Of course, it is a battle against the parasite because you need to kill the parasite very quickly. Can you imagine that in the human body you have one million of billion of parasites at the same time and you have to kill these million of billion of parasites is a real challenge. I think really the exciting next steps will be to try and use our approaches to now identify new drugs for this infection so that a few years down the line we may have a completely new way of treating malaria.